Hi, welcome back. My name is Brother Ismail, a former Christian who embraced Islam by the grace of Almighty God, Allah the Most High. This is part two in my video series entitled 110% Proof Jesus is Not God. And of course, we are dealing here with the huge theological nightmare that Mark chapter 13 verse 32 presents Christians with. My contention is that this verse proves Jesus, peace be upon him, is not God because he did not know the time of his second coming, but God knows all things. The, the verse goes as follows, quote, Jesus said, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, meaning Jesus, but only the Father, meaning God, end quote. This is a uh, quote from the New International Version of the Bible. So, in this video, I will continue refuting the explanations I gave you that Christians come up with to deal with this theological problem in Mark chapter 13, verse 32. In video 1, we refuted the claim that the words, nor the Son, are not original to the text of Matthew's Gospel. Now, here in part 2 of the series, I will refute the second Christian explanation, which goes as follows. Jesus knew the time of his return, but he voluntarily chose to limit the use of his divine knowledge or divine attribute of omniscience, which means uh, perfect knowledge, divine knowledge, or all knowledge. So here is my refutation of this Christian explanation. First, I state that knowing, but at the same time not knowing, is a coexistence of contraries, therefore the two cannot be alike. The attribute of inability, even if self-imposed or voluntary, is not one of God's attributes. There is no such thing as a willful or voluntary divine inability. Either you're able to or you're not able to. The use of ability in a limited or deficient way is an attribute of weakness and imperfection. This cannot be applied to God because he is always perfect in every way. This takes us to the topic of the Trinity. To me, co-equality of the so-called three divine persons of the Trinity means that they are all equal in their essence and attributes. And if any divine individual among them has a limitation of a divine attribute, while the other one or two divine individuals doesn't, this creates an imbalance and proves that one of them is either a lesser or limited God compared to the others, or one of them is no longer God anymore. Perhaps I should look into the pre-Christian trinity cults of ancient Greece and India for a greater understanding of the co-equality of divine persons in the Godheads, because, this, because truly this Christian belief has uh, pagan origins. Of course, this is not easy for me, because I'm thinking from a purely monotheistic Abrahamic perspective, and that's why I am at odds with the trinity. These absurdities do not befit God's perfect, majestic way. The Christian claim that Jesus was fully God, but incarnated and became a man, thus voluntarily restricting or limiting the use of certain divine attributes of his, comes from the writings of Paul, not from Jesus. So we're dealing with Pauline theology here. Paul says about Jesus, quote, Who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. But rather he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. End quote. This is a quote from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7, from the New American Bible version. First of all, I will say that this theology of Paul contradicts God's own divine attribute of immutability, meaning God does not change. God is the same at all times. We know God never changes from the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, and I quote, I, the Lord, do not change, end quote. Again, I'm using the New International Version. Commenting on Malachi 3 6, the Reformation Study Bible says that the words I do not change refer to the immutability or unchangeable character of God. In other words, if Jesus was fully God, and if he had all divine power, and had all divine knowledge, which has no limit or restriction, 
But then he decided to limit or restrict his divine uh, attribute of all knowledge. Then you have a change in God. You have a change in the divine attribute of God. Thus, the Christian is confronted with a huge contradiction from Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, which says that this cannot happen. There can be no change in God. He is unchangeable and he is immutable. God does not change in his divine essence and likewise his attributes are always the same. His attributes are always eternal, always holy, always unrestricted, always limitless, always perfect, and thus always without defect, thus always without imperfection, and always without inappropriateness, always without disgrace, always without any concept that would neg bring or imply negativity which is not befitting to God and God's power or his omniscient great majesty. If Jesus had all the divine knowledge of God, but then he limited his perfect limitless divine knowledge, then you, do, then you not only have a logical contradiction of limiting the limitless, but a contradiction in scripture between uh, Mark chapter 13 verse 32 and Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Therefore this Christian explanation is false and refuted. If Jesus is God, then Mark chapter 13 verse 32 is telling us that there was a change in an attribute of God. The divine attribute of all knowledge or omniscience in this case. And this cannot happen according to Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. God's divine attributes are not separated from his divine self or holy essence. And his essence does not change. God does not change and his unchanging essence is connected to and is inseparable from his divine attributes, his perfect attributes. Therefore, his attributes are also unchanging. Even if Jesus voluntarily restricted only one of his alleged divine attributes, in this case his uh, divine knowledge, then I still, say, I still say that he is no longer God. God's attributes are without limit or, and, without and without restriction. So to say otherwise is to say God is not God, which makes no sense at all. Do you have any biblical proof that God's divine attributes do indeed change? If God changed, he violated his own eternal essence, but Islam teaches that will never happen. Jesus did not say, quote, he chose to limit his divine knowledge, end quote. He simply said, quote, he did not know, end quote. He did not know when his return will occur. You have to be very careful not to put words into the mouth of Jesus or impose your own personal interpretations upon a clear Bible text. You and I need to accept Jesus' unambiguous words here in Mark chapter 13, verse 32. If you did, we would both have the same conclusion and that is, Jesus is not God. Where did Jesus say in his own words that he, quote, chose to limit his alleged divine knowledge? Yes, God's choice is unlimited, I agree. However, his attribute of omniscience requires that he know all things at all times. It requires full, unlimited, unlimited perfect knowledge. And I think you will agree with me in that. Besides, God does not choose for himself attributes of absurdities or weaknesses that do not befit his divine royal majesty. It is illogical and irrational and unreasonable to say that unlimited, unlimited omniscience was limited. Christians believe that Paul was inspired to write the following words, quote, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, end quote. This comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, and I'm using the New King James Version. Yes, the doctrine of divinity is nothing but confusion, and Paul says God is not the author of confusion. If what Christians claim is true, then what Jesus should have said is something like, quote, 
I do not know when the day will be because I have voluntarily restricted my divine, eternal, unchanging, unrestricted, and unlimited attribute of omniscience, which, of course, Jesus did not say, and which, of course, violates God's immutable essence, and which, of course, would make no sense at all, <laughs> of course. Some Christian apologetics try to give a better explanation of the text of Mark chapter 13, verse 32. They say we must remember it was Jesus, the incarnate one, who took on human limitations, who was being asked uh, about the time of his return. I find it very interesting that Christians do admit that this text is a clear indication of the limitation of the glory of Jesus. But I say in reply, what? God's glory can be limited? A limited God? The Christian says that in order for Jesus to function as the Messiah, there needed to be a limitation on the exercise and manifestation of his so-called divine attributes. Again, I reply, what? Limiting or restricting an unlimited and uh, unrestricted attribute of God? My question is, what positive or good purpose do these so-called limitations uh, on God's attributes have? Do these limitations bring more glory to God or less glory to Him? What benefit would this so-called self-imposed limitation of Jesus have to the resurrected and glorified Jesus? Does a fully able glorified God benefit from being previously disabled or handicapped? Does an all-knowing, fully glorified God benefit from being previously unknowing and ignorant? These limitations do not add glory or benefit, but only bring negativity and disgrace to a holy and perfect being such as God. If a Christian says the limitation of Jesus' divine attributes was for the benefit of humanity and not for God, I would say that God would have benefited humanity in a way that does not disgrace himself and in a way that benefits and a way and in a way that befits his majesty. God becoming a weak, dirty human being certainly does not benefit or befit his pure holy majesty. Does God bring benefits to humanity by disgracing himself? Or does he instead do as Islam teaches, achieve his objectives of benefiting humanity while maintaining his full, perfect, and transcendent glory and holiness at the same time? I will post a link to my video about God's transcendence in the video description below. Notice Jesus did not specify that he did not know when the hour would be during his incarnate state or human state of, of existence, and that he had known past tense, or does know present tense, or would know future tense, when the time will be in his glorified state of being, regardless of whether it was uh, in the glorified state before incarnation or after resurrection. Again, my Christian friends, stop putting words into the mouth of Jesus. Jesus made no such distinction. Instead, he made a general statement. The statement being general in nature applies to both past, present, and future times. Therefore, Jesus does not know the time of his second coming either, uh, even after his alleged death and resurrection, which would allegedly bring Jesus back to being the fully glorified God that he was supposed to have been uh, before the Incarnation. And the same applies to his pre-incarnate glorified state as well. Uh, because the generality of the statement of Mark chapter 13 verse 32 implies Jesus did not have this knowledge at that stage of his existence as well. Thus we have a limitation on an alleged divine attribute of Jesus. Actions stem from attributes and ability. They cannot be separated. The fact that Jesus could not perform the action of revealing the time of his second coming means he did not possess the divine attribute of omniscience 
or all knowledge. And it also implies that Jesus did not possess the divine attribute of omnipotence or all power, because only the Father could perform the action. So the Father had the knowledge and the power, but Jesus did not. One being, one being having, having different attributes than another being implies two different beings, different essences. In this case, Jesus being fully human, not divine, and God, of course, being fully divine. God is infinite and too exalted and transcendent to take for himself attributes which are particular to finite human beings, human attributes of weaknesses and limitations. It seems the Christian concept of God is not one of greatness, is not one of majesty and holiness, is not one of transcendence. Again, see my video about the transcendence of God. Come on, a limitation is a weakness, not a strength. It has negative connotations, and thus it cannot be applied to God without blaspheming against His perfect, all-powerful, and holy nature. Thus, the Christians are living in a severe state of blasphemy against God due to this false belief of theirs. The Christian is thus ideologically and theologically speaking, unknowingly in, living in a state of war with God, a war which they inevitably will lose. Let's read about God's reaction to this false Christian belief. The Quran, the Quran says in chapter 19, verses 88 to 93, quote, They say God, Allah, the most gracious, has begotten a son. Certainly you have made an abominable assertion, where the, whereby the heavens are almost torn, and the earth is split asunder, and the mountains fall into ruins. See how angry and upset God becomes at this false belief? For that they have attributed to God, the all-merciful, a child, for it is not consonant with the majesty of Allah, the most gracious, that he should beget a son. There is no one in the heavens and earth but that he comes to Allah, the All-Merciful, as a servant." End quote. So God has elegantly refuted this false belief and set the record straight that, that individual believers, including prophets like Jesus, peace be upon him, are not to be referred to as the Son of God, but as the slave or servant of God. Another issue is Yes, at times, Jesus had supernatural knowledge, just like any other prophet did. For example, according to the Bible, he knew what was in the hearts of men or their thoughts. But he did not have omniscience or all knowledge, and that's my point. God has all knowledge. His knowledge is not lacking in any way. As we have just seen from the Bible in Mark chapter 13, verse 32, Jesus' knowledge was and is lacking, was and is imperfect. Therefore, he can never be God. It's really that simple, folks. There is no need to do any kind of theological gymnastics here. Again, how can Jesus possess a complete, unlimited, divine omniscience, yet limit that knowledge at the same time, regardless of whether this was a voluntary limitation or not? The fact remains, the Christian God, here meaning Jesus, was limited in an unlimited attribute at one time in history. What is really perplexing is that while you Christians confirm that this is true, you still claim that Jesus did have complete unlimited omniscience at the time Jesus made that statement in Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Can you honestly say that Jesus did, uh, did have all knowledge? while he confirmed that he did not know when his return will occur? I mean, Jesus' ability to limit his alleged divine knowledge could display uh, omnipotence, but it could never display omniscience. On this very fundamental issue, Christianity has an illogical and irrational concept. Christianity is therefore fundamentally flawed, as I have proven in my video about God's transcendence. If I asked you, Christians, is Jesus a liar? I'm sure that you would say no. However, you seem to be very close to implying that Jesus was a liar because 
He said that he did not know the time, but you're saying, yes, he actually did know the time of his return. If he did know, but stated he didn't know, that would make Jesus a liar. What is even more perplexing and puzzling is that, according to your belief, Jesus had full omniscience before his incarnation. Therefore, at that prior stage of his existence, he did in fact know ahead of time when his second coming will occur. To say otherwise is to say Jesus did not know all things in his pre-incarnate existence when he was the fully glorified God. But that's even a blasphemy to Christians. Now, again, according to your Christian belief, this omniscience was voluntarily limited, and so Jesus, all of a sudden, did not know anymore when his return will be. So, in that light, please explain to me, how can your God originally, originally know something and then later on not know it? Does your God forget? Does your God erase previously known knowledge? Was your God being honest when he said, he did not know something that he previously knew? Okay, even if your God, Jesus, did remove his previous knowledge from himself, then we should find a more honest statement in Mark chapter 13, verse 32, which would have been something like, quote, I did know, but now I don't know, end quote. It would be more illogical and irrational, yes, of course, but at least the statement would become more honest. At the moment, all we have is Jesus saying simply, I don't know. Also, as I have already stated, if Jesus is God, then the attribute of full divine knowledge that he possesses is intrinsically connected to his divine essence, which means it is never separate from him. To say that full divine knowledge was not known to Jesus at one time in history is to say that God did not know the knowledge in his own self or essence, or he did not know himself, or his knowledge was separated from his own essence. This does not happen, and all of that is nonsense. Is your God unaware of the knowledge that his essence possesses? Is Jesus, if Jesus had access to the divine nature, then he would have known the divine knowledge. It's really a logical conclusion that I'm uh, making here. That's the end of video number two. I hope to see you with the third video in this series refuting the Christian explanation number three regarding Mark chapter 13 verse 32. All praise and glory be to Allah. It makes me so happy to refute this satanic falsehood. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum.